This is most likely the last installment of this video piece that uh, Grand Am's going to feature on our completing our third Cayman for Continental Tire. And we are roughly 65% done, um, but all of the heavy work has been done and now it's just a question of having the man hours and the time and the parts for the reassembly process. Um, since you've seen the car, the whole interior has been painted. Uh, the motor has been installed back in the car with the gearbox and now we're working on the ergonomics of the cockpit in an attempt to lay everything out uh, in a more driver-friendly environment. Obviously everybody experiences when you build a new car, the second time you build it, the third time you build it, little things get enhanced, improved. <clears throat> it's no different for any other team. All the other teams will tell you that the most recent car they built is the prettiest or it's the cleanest or it's the best set up because you just kind of learn as you go along uh, and try and improve on things that you've done before. The ergonomics are about to start and mostly it will kind of consist of putting switches in places that aren't confusing to guys that get in and out of these cars. Um, some of the drivers that don't get to drive them weekend in and weekend out. Um, we try and make them as simple as possible. A lot of these cars you look in, they have a lot of switches and it looks more like a, a fighter cockpit than it does a, a street stock car. So to give you an idea, this is a completed car. You'll see what was the blank panel that's just a piece of carbon fiber uh, on the console of the other cars now outfitted with switches that are labeled um, starting from the top. You've got a power switch uh, and going across the top you've got a fuel reserve switch and you have a cockpit blower fan for your driver. You've got a defrost switch and then you have a switch to turn on the cooler for the transmission. Some of the stuff that we're putting back together uh, or I should say kind of revising that we work on our uh, two things in the front. We redo the radiators um, because the car has to run a two and a half hour race amongst 65 other cars, ST cars, GS cars, and our series will absolutely test uh, any kind of like heat effects on a race car. You know, racing two and a half hours closely, we are pushing these cars to the limit more than any other kind of racing in the country. To further expand on the whole radiator substitution thing, we're going to spend a minute on this because it is a rather integral part of the Porsche because anyone who's ever raced a Porsche will tell you that the single most frustrating thing about driving a Porsche is, sorry Mark Raffoff, but you can't hit your competitors repeatedly from behind like most of the other cars can because they just lack small radiators shoved to the outside of the corners, but more specifically, the stock radiator in the car is plastic. So when you're beating and banging, in the end of a two and a half hour race, nine times out of ten, if you hit your competitor hard enough, you'll crack this radiator and you will end your day faster than you can say what happened. What the teams have done is this is a, an all aluminum, no plastic, beefier, wider radiator that will fit in the factory location. And the rules per Grand Am say you're allowed to substitute your radiators, but you can't go remodifying the front end of your car. So this stuff all works in the factory mounting locations, but in addition to cooling the car better, just because it's a more efficient system, it will withstand uh, the beating and banging that goes on. The first time that we ever put these radiators on, we chose to test them by crashing a car three laps later. And lo and behold, the radiator survived and the plastic one that we left in the middle didn't. It's not the most aesthetically attractive setup. It does look like a giant mess of steel braided spaghetti, but for the most part, We've been allowed uh, to put in these BMWs and these Porsches, a standalone ABS system that can just handle, you, you know, being driven at 10 tenths lap after lap without failure. And uh, the series is kind enough to let us revise that application of the car. And it helps because we haven't had any failures. And some teams have had some big brake failures prior to being allowed to use this. And the net result was some pretty heavily crashed cars. What you have here is your standard a uh, 16 and a half gallon fuel tank from Porsche. Um, some cars have a little bit more capacity, but for the most part, this is as it is from the dealer. When it's time to go racing, um, you have to drop it out of the car, stick your hand down in there, take everything out of there that's used for telling the driver how much gas is left in the tank because we have a required amount of gas that we are allowed to carry. And that is how Grand Am has tried to manage 
the fuel windows uh, for all of the cars with the attempt of trying to kind of manage the outcome of the race. Smaller cars have better fuel windows, bigger cars have smaller windows, but for the most part, in order to control that, teams need to have a fixed amount of gas in the tank. So Porsche Cayman runs 17 gallons of gas. Um, we take all of the stuff out of the bottom of the tank. Teams will put uh, either a fuel cell in their car or some teams run the stock gas tank. We're one of the few teams that still run the stock gas tank. We have to put anti-slosh foam in there. And then we have what are called fuel displacement uh, balls and bricks that are different size balls or squares that will displace a certain amount of gas. So um, if you have a 19 gallon tank, you need to put two gallons worth of, uh, of displacement parts in there to get to 17 gallons. And um, for safety reasons, you then have to outfit the tank with a bulkhead fitting for a discriminator valve, which is used to um, burp air out of the tank, but it's also used for the fueler. When he goes to fuel the car, he can actually see the fuel level get to the top. And in order to make all that possible, you start by going to your local marine supply store or anybody else that'll sell you this fitting, and you tap it in the tank, screw it in there, and then you begin assembling uh, kind of a race-enhanced stock fuel tank. I want to say thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to Grand Am for coming by here uh, and giving us the opportunity to showcase what we do. Um, please continue to watch all the races. 